field has gotten the one to go here at Richmond. Take a look at our Craftsman pitch summary. Kevin Harvick second after coming in first. Denny Hamlin dropping back. Jeff Burton holding third. Jimmy Johnson was running 17th, did not hit. Jamie McMurray in the 26 car. A commitment cone violation has to restart at the tail end of the longest line. Ready. Kevin LePage is Ready. the lucky dog. Here we go. 40 laps complete. I think Jimmy Johnson would last long with those used tires. Did you, Wally? No, not the way Harvick's been running around here lately. And a lot of guys in the garage were talking about it. And the number I got, Benny, was 30 laps. If you have 30 laps on your tires, you have to come to pit road because you are just going to get blown by in a hurry. Well, we'll we, we, we yeah. know the 42 works because yeah. he got blown away with 42 laps on his tires. Tony Stewart currently 26th, Earnhardt Jr. 22nd. There you see the championship standings up to the moment. And Burton around Harvick and the 14. I guess that was five bonus points for the 31 car. Yes, I think so. Update on Jimmy Johnson from Martin. Well, Bill, you have to keep in mind the overall goal for the 48 team. They are already locked in the chase for the championship. They're trying to learn as much as they can for the final 10 races, especially next week at New Hampshire. Very similar racetrack, so why not leave them out on old tires just to see what happens? I don't think you want to do that again. We know what happens. Yeah. You get past. Matt Kenseth in the 17 inside of Jeff Gordon. Gordon, of course, teammates with the 48 of Johnson. Marty watching Matt Kenseth, too. Bilson developing concern for our championship leader, Matt Kenseth. His brakes already going faulty, he thinks, while you mentioned it earlier. It's a big concern here at Richmond. Wow, if your brakes are going away this early, Marty, you're in big trouble. And, you know, you're really hard on the brakes here, and there's not much time to cool them off see how hard they go into the corner you're on the brakes really really hard then you get off the brake pedal let the car roll get back on the gas then you're on the straightaway for a short time and you hammer the brake pedal again so if your car's handling really well you don't use as much brake you use less brake when your car is turning through the center really good but we look at the front rotors on the 17 car and i don't see any sign of, of being warm whatsoever. Well, let's listen to the radio and find out what they said moments ago. Okay. I just, uh, I know you don't want to hear about it, but it, it, everything worked really good for about 12 laps, 15 laps, and uh, since I was getting ready to pass the four cars, start started shaking. It just keeps getting worse. I shut off the rear brake blower, too. I shut everything off. I don't have any blowers on. And uh, the front shake real bad, and the rear has got a real bad grind to it, almost like the pads in backwards, you know, like metal on metal, like a grind, like it's tearing something apart. Wow. As Matt said, guys, you know, he said he feels like almost like the brakes are in backwards. He said it's an, an odd feeling, but one thing he did tell Robbie Reiser, I know I cannot drive like this all night long. And remember here in May, he blew a rear right. rotor. That's exactly right. And it bounced off the racetrack, went through the oil tank, and he had a terrible finish. What are these, some of these guys with their hair on that vibration that the rotors are warping? You know, uh, we, we heard some of that last night. And these things get so hot, and then they cool down under a yellow, and they get so hot. There's a possibility these rotors will warp sometimes, and that's where you get the big vibration. Ends it finished 38th here in the spring after the problems that Benny alluded to. Here's your pole sitter, Denny Hamlin, in the 11 car. Dave with an update on Hamlin. What happened, Bill, on that pit stop for Denny Hamlin to lose five positions on pit road? When the tire carrier slammed the tire onto the wheel, the lugs go through the lug nut, and sometimes they pop off. He has to pick it up and put it back on, and one of those lug nuts popped off. He had to hand thread it back on, and that's what cost him time. That's a, that's a hard job down there, especially with the pressure under these guys, Dave. They've never been in this situation before. When you drop something around your house, you can't find it. You drop a lug nut here under pressure, where is it? They usually have a spare one tied 
lied to themselves somewhere that they yank off and then put it on real quick, but it costs time. Those tires weigh about 50 pounds with no innerliner, and Benny, you and I talked about it earlier this week. Some of these teams, these pit crews, are in a situation they've never been in before under this pressure. <laughs> I mean, they're trying to win $5 million, be in position to win $5 million at the end of the year. We talk about the pressure that the drivers are under. Every man on that team is under pressure. Oh, good racing right here. Kyle Busch right there in the five car. You see Truex back there. He, he lost a lap, so he is one lap down right now. And right now, Johnson, who was 17th, restarted first, has fallen back to seventh, but is holding his own right here. Hamlin's going to get that spot, maybe. There's Casey Kane in the nine. Allen's got an update there. Uh, yeah, a nice stop for his team. He's got Casey up to 10th place now and moving forward. That's what he needs to do tonight. Although Casey did call in on the radio a little while ago, said he has a strange feeling when he turns the wheel. The team said, all right, well, keep an eye on it. You're feeling, when you're, uh, all the chase guys are feeling all these little things right now. And they're hearing voices. They're too. hearing voices. Now let's drop back. Tony Stewart is back in the 27th spot, started 40th. The caution came out when Sterling Marlin went around off the front bumper of Tony's car. The leader, Kevin Harvick, inside of four seconds behind Stewart at the time. Of course, I would do the same thing. <laughs> I mean, you're talking about the chase here. Would Tony Stewart say, no, I didn't do that on purpose? Well, he'll probably tell you that, but hey, you're talking about the chase. If you gotta dump somebody, you gotta dump somebody. Was working hard trying to get by Marlin, couldn't get by, then just moved him out of the way. Jeff Burton is the race leader at Richmond. Sixty-four laps are complete here at Richmond. Jeff Burton is the race leader. By about half a second over Kevin Harvick, our team Chevy drivers to watch in their best Richmond finish. Bernhardt, Stewart, and Gordon all trying to make the chase. Johnson's already locked in. There is Jeff Burton, your race leader. Kevin Harvick runs second. And Burton has caught the tail end already of the pack. So he's going to start lapping guys again here pretty quick. Tony Stewart sits in the 25th spot right now. Laps here at Richmond about 23 seconds. Burton just ran a 22.8. Jeff Mark Mackenzie just ran a 22-6. And there's a change for the lead right here. Harvick back around his teammate. So Kevin Harvick back to the point. And Jeff Burton the second. Both those drivers have gotten their five bonus points. You see Tony Stewart, who was in the box in the corner there, running in the 25th spot. But he is only about six seconds in front of Jeff Burton. Kevin Harvick now. Kevin Harvick, correct, after the lead change. thing is, too, when you're in Tony's situation, you know, Harvick is running good laps. He's not hurting the car. He's not pushing the car. I would think Tony Stewart's probably running the car a little bit more aggressive, obviously, because he knows Jeff Burton's coming. So he's probably using this car up a little bit more. He's probably using those brakes up a little bit more because he's trying to get by a lot of these guys. He's having to go in a little bit deeper, a little bit more brake. We'll just have to see how that plays out over the next 25 laps. There's Tony. And now Tony Stewart has what he's been wanting, some green, clean racetrack in front of him. He can take the entire racetrack and don't have to worry about using up his car. That's through turns three and four. So he comes out of four. There is Harvick right there. About five seconds, maybe. Just about. And there's a lot of traffic in front of Tony after he gets through that little bit of clean space he's got there, BP. Car of Two X Junior trying to get by Jimmy Johnson. But don't get Martin is one lap down, and Martin needs to catch the 14 of Sterling Marlin and get by him if he wants to be in a position to get his lap back. Right now, the top eight drivers on the track are all trying to make the chase for the next Cal Cup. Kenseth is one of them. He's locked in. There are eight spots left. Nine guys chasing him. Sony, the official high-definition television of NASCAR on TNT, takes your NASCAR experience to another level with Sony Full HD 1080, the world's most powerful HD experience. 
79 laps are complete here at Richmond. Kevin Harvick is the race leader in that 29 car. His teammate Jeff Burton in the 31 runs second. Then it's Martin Kenseth and Kyle Busch, the top five. Let's do it, chasers through the field, starting with Alan Bestwick. And Kevin Harvick, who, as you can see, has some traffic to deal with right now. Kevin, just before that last set of pit stops, came on the radio, told his team his car lacked a little rear end grip, but don't make any changes. He is out in front of the uh, group of cars uh, leading this race. Jeff Burton running in second spot right now. You know, Jeff, falling back to 10th in the championship coming into this race. Oh, total out. Jimmy Johnson involved and Carl, Carl Edwards. Edwards. Second caution of the night. Johnson second in the championship standings. Edwards four wins a year ago, none this year. I know Truex was working Johnson for a long, long time. Finally got past him. See Carl Edwards getting underneath him, going down into turn one. Car gets a little bit loose on Carl. He starts sliding up the racetrack and he runs right into the 48 of Jimmy Johnson. And he just tells he's, as he goes down in there, the car just gets sideways on him. And they didn't really hit anything too hard, so I there's really no damage. If he got to hit the wall, that's the way to do it. Yeah. Pit road's open. Here they come. Kyle Petty is the lucky dog. Pat. In the 24, Jeff Gordon pulls to a stop. He says he's lost all of his drive off the corner. Steve Latar calls for another track bar adjustment. Down two rounds to tighten him up. Marty? Mark Martin's holding up his end of the bargain, running third right now. That would put him in the championship. Car just a little bit snug. Quarter round in the right rear, Allen. Air pressure adjustment for Kevin Harvick to help him turn in the corner. Also trying to pull some tape off the grill. The 29 running a little warm, Dave. Kyle Busch picked up three positions on that last run. He's already leaving pit road. No adjustments to a car that was just a little bit free off the corner. Bill Harvick got, he lost a little time leaving his pits there at BP. It looked like he was blocked by somebody. That just second he had to hesitate, he lost the lead to Kenseth. That's right, when he, when he backed off the throttle, he lost the lead. Same thing happened to him on his first pit stop too. Crew cam, BP. Jeff Merkel, Jackman for Greg Biffle. Car goes up, rear tires off. Check out the front. Okay, we're good. Let's go around to the left side. Car is up. Check it out. Front, rear, go. 